Are you a leader in customer success, pre-sales, professional services, support? Do you work behind the scenes and roll up your sleeves to make sure that customers are happy? Renew. Then this is for you. Welcome to the GSD Podcast. Welcome to the GSD Podcast. Getting it done. Services, success, and software. We'll talk with the pros that have been in the trenches, getting service teams off the ground, launching new types of groups to service customers, or running agencies that don't have a product attached to it. For the pros, by the pros. This is the GSD Podcast, and this is your host, Jeff Kushmerick. My, my standard joke is I, I love having the E for the explicit in the podcast. Thing. It's, <laughs> like, it's like having a like Dr. Dre album. Uh, or yes, something. I love that. I love that. You're from Boston. Isn't that like a... Oh, we do a swear. Like a prerequisite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen Goodwill Hunting. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and I'm gonna like let this all. I'm not. I don't. I won't cut any of this. Everybody, welcome. But um, we're guessing, yeah. we're and I just realized um, I should uh, I, I should hit record because we're already in the middle of it. But uh, I'm here with <laughs> Stan, uh, Kemp uh, from Bridge. And uh, uh, quick note: uh, we're both part of Game Grower Team, which is where a lot of people in the CS industry get together and tr- pro- slash troubleshoot slash event slash. Um, <laughs> all of yeah all of the yeah, exactly we make jokes we're funny yeah, a lot of, yeah. A lot of jokes. um so uh so yes from boston the accents and goodwill hunting a little over the top uh, <laughs> matt matt damon and affleck both they have terrible boston accents <laughs> they, they, they put it on too much it's like watching ray donovan but anyways that's I, great. I, I think ray right. donovan that's also great that's hilarious <laughs> so so Stephanie, you have a, a great background. And actually, I said we didn't want to talk too much about backgrounds normally. But, <laughs> but I get the exception. <laughs> I'll tell you why here. And if Diane's listening, she'll appreciate this. So Diane Gordon, who was like my mentor and it was like OG customer success back in, you know, pre-2010 days and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, she's one of the pioneers. Like she wrote the intro to the, um, the Gainsight book and all that stuff or part of it. Anyways, I, I'm yeah, probably we digress. <laughs> but anyways, um, on my podcast, I wish I could be like number twelve or whatever. Yeah. Right? Um, I asked her what was the profile for hiring because, right, you know, it's just impossible to find yeah. great people. And she said, uh, you know, obviously there's the empathy parts of it, but she said, and you know where I'm going with this, she's like, I look for people who have been in a lifetime of service, like mm-hmm. they worked in retail. Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. and so you've done a couple stints in retail. Yeah. I do. I, I don't think I've, anybody in the podcast knows this, but like my job in college was I folded jeans at the Gap, and I got so good at it that they made me a manager, so I could come in at like four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, right. I just like loaded the store up. Yeah. The only bad part about that I found out later is that you had to actually be the first one on the cashier thing uh, when the store opened until the next. Yeah. Thing. And, yeah. That's you hilarious. Dreaded cl- clopening. Uh, oh, uh, everybody loves a good clopen. And <laughs> um, I would love to engage in a pant folding competition because I have folded my fair share of pants. So <laughs> we, had an we had an insert too, as well. Oh, that's so. nice. We didn't have that. That's nice. We will talk about customer success here. Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes my wife folds my shirts and they're in like sixteenths, like like when you take craft oh, cheese, yeah. folding it over. <laughs> Anyways, so tell us a little bit about um, about how you went from retail yeah. to success. Um, well, to be honest, I, I'm going to actually take you back to my post college days, back to when I was 21. Okay. Um, talk about a career of service. I spent um, 10 years in the public school system. So yeah, I was a, I started as a middle middle school teacher. 
um, ended up teaching high school English for the most amount of years, um, worked in a title one school oh. um, and was a varsity girls basketball coach for pretty much the entirety of my teaching career as well. Um, moved into retail management when um, I just got really burnt out on teaching, which is something we can dive into later if you want. Um, and then um, worked at Lululemon, um, absolutely amazing, amazing company as it relates to like personal and professional development, okay. um, really learned about folding pants and um, what it means to provide like an exemplary guest experience. Um, ended up moving into some account management, like managed a yoga studio, then managed a book of business at a publishing house, um, really got into like personal branding and marketing. Um, and then that's when I started running my own company. So um, I started Slay Creative, which is a fun play on words. My middle name is Lee, spelled L-E-I-G-H. So um, I've been doing that for over four years, um, but really also learned business from a space of um one I learned that you just say yes and you figure it out 99 percent of the time so I'm really really good at that yeah. <laughs> I love the internet great at uh moving around um and then two um KPIs and how to talk to clients about KPIs and even you know I was my own financial person and I was also my own, you know, I'm my, I'm my own accountant and I am also my own salesperson and I'm my own marketing person and I'm my own consultant. Um, so it was really um, a big, a big learning space for me. Um, and then I realized um, going back to that kind of athlete analogy, um, I just, I just wasn't growing in this space of bring a, being a freelancer. Um, I really live by this mantra, uh, never be the smartest person in the room when you are a freelancer, you are the only person in the room, typically, therefore the smartest. Very, very um, easy not to be the smartest person in the room, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I started, I knew that I wanted to be in account management. I really felt that my whole like, you know, tool bag was leading me into the space of account management, an area I had been before. Um, and to be honest with you, back in around 2019, when I decided to leave this kind of like total freelance space. I had never even heard of what a customer success manager was. It was like this kind of like new term. It's it's cool a, title. Yeah. It's a consolidation needed, right? And yeah. you just saying on one of those GGR calls, like we're just account managers, right? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, that I started reading more, you know, it's like so in order to get the job you want, you have to read the job description and then understand how to tell the story around how your resume lends itself to that job description. And as I dove deeper and deeper into, um, yeah, a lot of service, like I am providing a service, I am able to manage a book of business, I'm, I'm, I'm able to establish relationships, but more so or in tandem with that is I can look at data and I can tell stories from that data. And I can not only understand what it means for me as a business professional in my own um, segment or book of business or whatever it is, but also to my client who is probably not going to speak this very, I, I knew I wanted to be in tech also. Yeah. Um, so it was like, who, who probably doesn't speak on, a, on an everyday basis, the same language that um, you know engineers and, and implementation teams and support teams are using. Um, and my degree is in English. So that is something I've always loved is writing and, and um, creating those stories, building out those stories. I love marketing. Yeah. Um, and so it just felt like a very natural fit. Um, and it was really challenging to get here, to be honest with you. Um, it's so refreshing to hear you say, you know, one of your mentors had mentioned like, get people from retail, get people from yeah. education. And I, um, I'd rather have a mom that can only give me 20, or mom or dad, sorry, I was gonna, a working parent that only has yeah. 20 hours to, to give. And I'm yeah. I guarantee you're gonna get more out of that 20 hours than, yeah. I'm not gonna crack out the millennial jokes right. now. You get the, <laughs> <laughs> I am on the I am on the millennial uh, spectrum, so um, hopefully representing well here. But um, yeah, it was really challenging. So I mean, I went through. I joke, but I have a uh, folder in my inbox, and it has over a thousand emails, and those are emails of denials and or hey, we got your application, thank you. Wow. Um, 
And then I was working actually, so going back into this whole service conversation, I was actually a server for when I was living in Denver and I was really trying to like dig into these interviews, which as any of you know, who have looked for a job, especially around 2019, right before COVID hit, it was like a full-time thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was serving, which again, okay, I have my little book of business, AKA my section at the restaurant. I'm facilitating the experience of you've come in to dine and I am going to be able to provide the conduit between the kitchen and what I'm going to right. serve you. Right. Like, Which could just be you. like the product team. Yeah, or- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, cook it or burn. I'm so sorry. Yes, I'm delivering yes. a real <laughs> shitty message to you. Um, and COVID hit. So as, as we all know, that res- the restaurant industry completely got annihilated. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of stopped everything as, as we all did. Um, and I went back into retail. I started working at Lululemon again. Um, and then really just stayed true to the fact that I wanted to be in customer success. And, um, at that point, you know, the networking connections that I had made and the, and the hard work that I had put in to really just like keep digging away on LinkedIn and constantly updating my resume and, and not stopping what I was doing in my real life, yeah. because what I was doing in my real life was still going to lend itself to whenever I was able to land um, this role. So that, that is a hustle. I will say that. Yeah. That is, <laughs> wow. Like most of millennials don't have that, you know, that, you know. oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So what do you think? sealed the deal with bridge like mm. you th- like if i was to call up your manager and say like you must be very thankful you took a chance but what made you take this chance was it person yeah. i mean what, what do you think it was oh gosh that's such a great question <clears throat> number one i christy she listens to this she's wonderful i absolutely love my manager and what i love about her is she's always saying um that she believes in uh changing your career path and really looking at transferable skills as opposed to, oh, congratulations, you have this title on your resume for the last four years. You must be wonderful for this job. Um, And what I will say, going back to Hustle, is the um, individual who was in her role um, about a year ago, um, I actually applied for the same job. I was so, so passionate about entering, entering the technology space and entering um, Bridge as a learning management system, a, a performance management system tool. And I knew that um, because of my passion in um, employee engagement, employee retention, um, right. providing upskilling opportunities for employees, and then even with COVID, like how this whole demographic of like the workforce is going to look, which, you know, yeah. we're now seeing this like great resignation and, and all companies are really diving into how they're going to increase, uh, increase employee engagement and employee retention. Um, so I was passionate about this a year ago and the individual who was in my current manager's role, um, I interviewed with her. Mm-hmm. And when I got, I also got very good at not taking no for an answer. So I got no, and I was like, Hey, I, I would like some feedback. Wow. Um, and she was wonderful. She was like, Hey, we had an internal hire. I will absolutely do anything I can to like help you. You were great in your interview. Um, and I, and I took that, you know, little nugget with me when this job reopened again a year later. Um, and I said, Hey, I met with the old hiring manager, like, please, like, I would really love to hire, uh, interview for this opportunity. Um, and to be honest, it was the most organic interview experience I've ever had. And I've had quite a few in the last two years, a lot, actually. Um, I mean, I've been offered jobs on the table and the next day had the recruiter call me and say, just kidding. We actually wow. decided to go with somebody else. I mean, I had some brutal, brutal days. Um, and it, I don't know you know, what your experience is in this, but I mean, I was doing homework for some company interviews that was two, three, four hours to give these like presentations. Um, And back in the day, uh, like like, all day Microsoft interviews and yeah. 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 So, and I mean, I think that's very typical when you look at like the Amazons, the Microsofts, I mean, you like study for six months to go to this like one, one day interview, but, um, at bridge, it was just so organic. I felt, I, I immediately felt connected to their company culture, um, a year ago. And I, and I leaned into that in, in this, you know, recent experience. Um, 
And, you know, our president, I got to meet with him. And again, it was just like very organic, very natural. Um, and it moved quickly, which is another, was another just like beautiful piece of it. Um, I, I was like doing some other interviews as well. And I just said like, Hey, this is where I want to work. And like, this is what I need to make it happen. And it was just like, no question. And it just, again, super organic. Yeah, um, and I feel really, um, aligned with just our values, the people, um, it's been phenomenal. So what, what's yeah. been the hardest part, um, getting up to speed on, on the CSM role? Ooh, it, to be honest with you, it's not the CSM role. It's product knowledge. Yes. I mean, for me, competence is where I glean a lot of my confidence. So when I'm handed this book of business, um, it's like, oh, wonderful. I know about relationship management. I know about people management. Um, I know how to have tough conversations, but oh my gosh, ask me one question about how to, how to pull an analytics report in our back end, And I'm like, I'm going to need to get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, um, that's a great like, question. That's what yeah. you said. Yes, yes, exactly. So, <laughs> and again, I've been really fortunate. Um, I, if I were in a team, you know, I've been part of teams where, um, that, that product education piece is not there, right. Even in a retail store where it's like, okay, if nobody's teaching me about the pants that I'm folding, how am I going to sell them? Um, which is another area of Lululemon that I, that I take such pride in having worked for that company. They call their salespeople educators. Oh, wow. Um, they actually put education as the North star of their entire guest experience. Um, and I view, you know, a, a CSM role in very much the same way. My job is to educate and empathize and be a champion for that client. So um, yeah, I would say it's obviously the most time consuming and will definitely be, I'm one of those people who will stay up until 2 a.m. Like I was just going to say, I bet you are just like on the system, <laughs> doing every possible activity. You've got a sandbox going. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, like nobody's going to screw me on the analytics question. Again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know me well now at this point, Jeff. So um, yeah, it's just, it's just being in it. It's just doing it. Um, and also, you know, as an organization, using your technology within your company. So it's like, we call it bridge for bridge. Um, you know, our team is utilizing it. And right. how do we utilize it? And how does that teach me about like, the user experience when I go to my clients? So, right. yeah. Like putting a mirror to a mirror, but yeah, in your own dog food, yeah. I would say it. But, uh, well, listen, as you, you probably know, I'm a huge fan because you really took to one of my catchphrases. So, uh <laughs> So much stuff. like you're the best person ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, I actually, I, and I should say, I, I, I've changed it now. I think I said it happens at onboarding, but now it's retention starts and implementation. Yeah, I love it. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. And why has um, this has resonated so much for you? Like you know, right into the first. By the way, if my daughter runs down here, but, but uh, this is that's okay. COVID. <laughs> Right. So I love it. So, well, why did that, why did that particular thing seem to resonate with you so much? Yeah. Um, a couple of reasons. Number one, as someone who has run my own company and uh, purchased tools on behalf of clients or utilize technology on behalf of clients, for example, if I build out a website, yep. um, I go into a lot of detail around or a lot of thought around what back end. Um, system am I going to use that's the most user friendly for their experience? How much uh, tech savvy do they have in their back pocket? So some, um, I understand you mean so, like, oh, I'm not going to give this person WordPress because they'll fall. So I'm going to give them Wix or Squarespace because correct. It's easy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So, and even tools like MailChimp, an email marketing tool, or um, Asana or, you know, whatever it is for us to even have, like, okay, I'm working with a client and they, what is our workflow going to be together? Yeah. Um, I have my own experiences of almost adopting something on behalf of a client, a client doesn't use it. And then why are they going to come back to me for what I would deem an upsell in my own freelance world? If right. there's absolutely no reason for them to utilize me as an email marketing specialist, because all of a sudden the tool is irrelevant to them. Mm -hmm. So that is like my own personal experience of running my own business. Um, and then number two, like my experiences from 
uh, teaching, um, I can probably go into two different branches of teaching and retail, but like with teaching, it's obviously like, if I can't get a student to buy into our partnership right. in the first few weeks of us having relationship together, it's going to be super challenging for me in three, four, six months to even get the student to understand like the goal that we're trying to achieve for him or her um, yeah. together. Um, and then same with retail, you know, the whole premise of um, this idea behind like omni-channel and like one guest is like that, a, a, I call them guests because Lululemon, you know, we don't call people customers. So <laughs> what well, I, and then yeah, I, I call them guests, yeah. clients, clients, guests, I have all these synonyms. So the guest comes into the store and the experience that I provide for them in that initial onset is going to set the tone for their entire journey through the brand for their, in, for the entirety of the brand. And if they even decide to make another decision of, yes, I'm going to choose Lululemon or I'm going to choose Gap or whatever it is. Um, so I just have seen in so many different areas of my life and so many different professional experiences that, that I have had that if I do not capture that person in that initial conversation, that initial implementation, um, it's going to be so challenging yeah. for that relationship to be able to grow and then for that usage to be there, um, which is then going to allow, you know, our professional uh, contractual relationship here, whatever it is, to flourish. I mean, it's fine. I see this um, so much in the startup land, just to take to continue that thread where they've finally convinced a customer to not go with the big company, right? Yeah. And yeah like let's let's move forward we're gonna take a chance and so somebody made a decision they're taking a chance with you yeah and they got through the sales process and then suddenly and this is where aaron had the chocolate disillusionment disillusionment excuse me you just do nothing but disappoint them yeah. and they're like, oh my god i could get fired for making this terrible decision and then it just it all starts from there right yeah yeah that's such a good, um, and I mean, from what's coming up for me at least is um, I've worked with a couple startups, startups in my freelance space. Um, like what you're selling is the personal relationship because you have time for it. Like <laughs> that is like that is like the thing that um, I think a lot of startups can lean on is like, hey, we're not big, and because of that, we are going to be able to have a deeper. Uh, relationship with you. That's right. Um, That's just, I'm going to interrupt you. Sorry, like, because no, please. I'm passionate about it. And this is why I'm always harping, as you know, in the, in the, in the office hour stuff about bring your CSM and it might not be your, this is going to be the CSM that you have, but bring them, like bring Stephanie into a pre-sales meeting. And they're like, yeah. oh, this is who I'm going to work with. They're like, yeah. And because you're not talking about features and you're not talking about dollars and commissions and everything. Yeah what are you trying to do with our, oh yeah, one of my other customers does this. And then you suddenly just have that relationship with them. You yeah. start the relationship in pre-sales. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's such a no brainer for me. And then all I hear from sales leaders are, you're going to slow the deal down. And <laughs> so, stand, uh, you know, you wake up in the morning and you, you see the congrats, we signed this deal and they need to kick off tomorrow because yeah. they're going <laughs> Uh, that, uh, that speaks so powerfully to my passion too, of, um, alignment. Oh yeah. That's great. Cause I was going yeah. to find a natural Did we transition. Well, yeah, yeah. I, um, <laughs> I just am you so, Stephanie. You're, you're better <laughs> than I am. So <laughs> I will, I'll guest lead one of these days. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, it's just such a passion of mine too. Having been, what I really love actually is my, um, the sales lead that I've been working with, he's actually a girls basketball coach. So we, um, shoot, shoot up. Post up play and, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when that, you know, and when we have conversations, like that's always the focus is like, okay, the alignment and how do we all work to like, we all want to score the most points as yeah. a team. So like, how, how do we do that? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Um, and yeah, it's challenging. I will say one of the things um, coming from the space 
that I did in like education and retail management. Um, and in this like 100% remote space too, right? Like this, I've worked remotely um, as a freelancer. All of my clients were remote, but now I'm on a team that is fully remote. Yeah. And my naivete sometimes of like, oh, well, he knows that over in implementations and like, no, he doesn't. Nobody's told him that, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I kick up my communication a notch. I'm like, okay, I would rather these, uh, my teammates say, Stephanie, we already know that you don't need to tell us that again, then like never communicated at all. Yeah. Um, and the information get lost in translation or lost in the black hole of, of it's a huge problem of mine and, and, yeah. and, and it's had to like i will just assume people know things or a lot, a lot of bullet points instead of you know giving the real big explanations and i've yeah. definitely had to work on that um you know a is being a consultant and then b working remotely with remote teams and yeah. you know, suddenly using a lot of things like miro and post-its and just yeah. all these other things that you, you need to do and everything yeah so did you come into bridge and like say like <laughs> I'm just envisioning you be like oh there's no SOP for this I'll, I'll go create that like <laughs> is there a wiki full of you posts? know me very well you know me very well <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh yes. I think I I definitely said that I definitely yeah. said is there no SOP for this where do where do I find this where is my source of truth how yeah. do we create one who do I talk to um and I'm very much a like ask for forgiveness, not permission. Um, so it's like, hey, everybody is like doing a really good job and they're working really hard. And so if I can just go to somebody and get an answer as opposed to trying to like travel through, right. I'm going to do it. And then I'll wait for somebody to be like that. No, don't do that. And I'll be like, OK, I mean, that is the other thing. Um, so you're the one who talks to the developers. That's, that's what I'm getting out of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Feedback is just such a core piece of like my belief of like what makes for a good work culture. Um, I don't think growth happens if if uh, coworkers cannot have those feedback conversations, good, bad, or the otherwise. Um, I tell my team all the time my love language um, is words of affirmation. So like I always so appreciate when people like, and I love we use motivosity. Um, which is like a tool to hand out dollars to teammates for like matching our core values. I know about that one, but that's- Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. So, um, but anyway, yeah, it's just like, I, I've come to this space in my life too, where it's just like, look, I showed up so authentically in my interview. And so the expectation of what I'm going to deliver or just like who I'm going to be in my role, like- I don't need to make myself smaller or more quiet because I was hired to do this job. I was hired to show up in, in the exact way that I am. Um, and I will say uh, uh, to your point of like me just coming in like, Hey, do we have an SOP for this? Like um, I, I, I joined bridge because I felt the culture would be, and I'm seeing it that, that like affirmed that right. it's like, no, but do you want to create it together or can you create it? Or can I look at it? It's like, that's where I needed to be. Um, you yeah. know, one of my core values is disruption, which I think is achieved through innovation. And so I need to be surrounded by people who are also saying like, yeah, this actually isn't working. How do we, how do we challenge the system? How do we make it better? That's interesting because I, I, how many because i know you have the larger public parent i think but um what's the company size right now for bridge so yeah we're we are like a hundred uh people the smaller company yeah. but ltg um honestly uh learning technologies group is thousands i mean it is like there That's, are usually you don't get that type of yeah you know it's more like you know it's been handed down and this is how it is yeah yeah so it's been, in, it, yeah, like I was telling you before we started recording, um, we were recently acquired. So um, just going through, I mean, it's been amazing because now it's like we have this parent, parent yeah. company <laughs> um, that can give us a lot of resources that, again, I don't, know, I don't know the experience of not being acquired. So I'm sure that the team did not have access to in their um, like independent state. Right. Um, and there's just the pain points of like, it, switching technology and servers and like all of that kind of stuff um so change yeah. which is what you're dealing with as a csm with your customers right like yeah you know like oh wait this doesn't have that button anymore oh this is terrible right. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's the, what's the, I, we're, I'm trying to make sure we don't go super long, but uh, what's, what's the, you, you're on there, you're, you're up to, you're getting up to speed, you're figuring all these things out. What's your big goal for the, for the, for the rest of 2021 in terms of cool. the, the CSM stuff? Oh gosh, that's a beefy question. I should have um, asked this question, but uh, that's yeah, fine. I love it. I love I it. Hear, um, I hear your interviews. So. I mean, I definitely um, want to be viewed like by my teammates and peers as um, someone, integrity is also really important to me. So not only do I, I say what I do, but I do what I say. Um, I want the sales team, I want the implementations team, I want the engineering team to be, oh, I can go to Stephanie. If oh, I, I was to just about you. to say that. I <laughs> I remember I was getting asked a similar type of question or in something, and uh, I basically said, "You always need to have something that somebody's like, oh, I got to talk to Stephanie about that." Yeah. Like, you, yeah. If you don't have that, like, you know, look, or, you know, a yeah. you're great, but you, you should probably you, you need you need to find that out, right? It's yeah. kind of like if nobody's asking who who's the jerk in in your team, you're the jerk, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so yeah, I mean, that is my goal for the rest of the year is just to, I don't feel, um, there's nothing for me to prove from a standpoint of, I always believe that you join a work culture that, that trusts you when they hire you and you're not, I'm not trying to earn anything, sure. but I definitely have like a deep passion to be, um, have like a unique quality about myself, whether that's my creativity or whether that's my, um, I do always approach things from a solution mindset. I do have a lot of knowledge about like other technologies and integrations, even from just like the marketing space of like where a company would want to maybe house content that they would actually need to put into some type of learning management system to share out to the rest of the company. Um, so, and that's a lot of where my passion lies is like information dissemination, which is a not worldwide problem of like, how do we, um, disseminate like true, honest, good intel and how is that received by the community? So I'm, I'm really fortunate um, that I'm, that I'm in that space that is working. Yeah. <laughs> and this is going right back to another thing you hear me preach about a lot is like, you just proved again, why you bring that CSM into the pre-sale situation and everything, or, or, or you just what in this type of a role where you, you know, every, you try and know everything that your product does. So that when you hear what the business is trying to do, you yeah. can say, yep, this is how we're going to do it. Have you yeah. thought about this? And then you're showing the value. Another comment here, and this is totally out of left field, but yeah. I'm not getting the retail teacher mentality from you. I'm getting like driven athlete. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, really yeah. wind sprints after the loss, <laughs> you know, when Peter Pino is getting interviewed, like, <gasps> That's, oh, that's great. That's, that's what I'm great. getting. So, uh, and, and you, I mean, you coach basketball, so you obviously play. Yeah. It. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, my dad actually um, played major league baseball and was the first round pick um, his junior year out of USC. Small, shameless <laughs> plug. Um, my dad's name is Steve Kemp. I was born in Inglewood, New Jersey, because he played for the yeah. Yankees, which yes. is, you may know. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so we're actually going to delete this podcast now. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I definitely have the gene, um, and I did not reach near far of heights as yeah. he did, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I am driven and, yeah. um, I think going back to my other point too, about, you know, like how I show up at work, um, I think for a while as, uh, I mean, I could go, this could be its own podcast, like as a female, um, like needing to make myself small so that I could like show up in this, like presentable box that like people were expecting. Um, and I'm not, I'm not quiet. I'm not, um, I'm, I'm sometimes too demonstrative when I deliver, you know, like I, those are things that I've been working on in my own self, just to be, right. um, a better human, a better partner, a better like friend, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's That's like, I, I can show up. What you mean by that, by the way, like yeah. So I, I and we'll talk after this. I get somebody for you to meet because you're exactly this person um, <laughs> 20 years later. But uh, 
Um, well, that's, that's a, wow, that's a huge introspective thing to go over there. But um, I tell you what, let me, let me do this because there's no great segue out of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, I, the old thing I used to ask was, what was your COVID hobby? And then, do, then I stopped oh. asking that because now things are coming back and everything. Yeah. Like, uh, well, I'll just ask that. Like, so what okay. was your COVID hobby? I, I don't pit fancy the bread baker. Right? Yeah, no. Nope, I didn't. I did not bake any bread. Um, what I will say is, I used to be a very big runner. Um, like ran the Boston Marathon. Oh, I've been to Boston uh, back in like 2014, the year after the shooting. Oh, yeah. um, stopped running for quite some time. Just I, I kind of do this to myself. I do things super hard, and then I'm like, oh, I'm actually burnt out on that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so with COVID, um, one day I was just like, you know what? I can't go to a yoga class. I can't go to a studio. I'm just going to go run three miles. And now it's like, I think I, I still am running like 10 a day. I just like, that's like my really, I'm a very big morning workout person. I get up, I go for my trail run. I come back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and work. So yeah. that's my COVID. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, anything, what, what did I miss? Like, what, what, oh, gosh. Where, I'm, I'm going to put the links to your, your LinkedIn. You're not selling anything. So it's not like, oh, but maybe yeah. you're not. Is there anything you'd like to pitch? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I mean, yes, I still do freelancing. Um, I still do like some brand building, some web design. Um, I do a lot of copywriting. Um, awesome. It's not something I'm like, I'm not marketing myself yeah. like out there on the interwebs. Um, I'm fully devoted to my uh, career and definitely excited about like where that is going to take me. And I am for all of you out there have multiple revenue streams uh you know just do all the things don't don't put yourself in a box i'm not a fan of boxes so oh that's great and that's great that bridge was because for a long time it was like i had some consulting stuff on the side when i was working for big companies never got in the way right yeah at all like 100 percent didn't get in the way and then there were contracts that would be like nope like cannot do any of that stuff and you just wind up like getting killed a little bit, right? It's just yeah. like, yeah, because uh, anyways, but uh, well, listen, this is part one, I will say, because we'll definitely get together and let's say six months and see what, what, what's going on and, and yeah. uh, we've gone from there. So uh, I think we've hit the half hour mark. So I'm going to hit pause, but just hold on for a second so we can yeah. wrap up. And uh, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Yeah.